Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of valuing coupon stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios. So we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 40 billion market cap. They're trading at $23 a share and they have 1.8 billion shares outstanding. Coupon is the largest online marketplace in South Korea. People call them the Amazon of South Korea. Let's take a look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They did have negative free cash flow in 21 and 22. Their first positive in 2023. It came down a little in the trailing 12 months to 1.5 billion, but at least it's positive. Pretty low margins. They converted only 6% of their revenue into free cash flow. It was better in 2023, 9%, but they're still growing. Eventually they'll improve this number. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's negative every single year until the trailing 12 months, 1.4 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company and that doubles from 12 billion to 24 billion. So really nice growth on the top line. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value to all cash flows past year four, that's 47 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $39 billion. We divide that by 1.8 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price at $22. They're trading at $23. So they're trading at a 4% premium. It's a sell according to the model. There are 45 companies in the same industry as Coupon. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend almost 900 million in CapEx, less than the average, but a lot more than the median. Debt to equity ratio 0.9. So for every dollar of equity, they have 90 cents of debt, a little better than the average. They don't pay a dividend. They just started generating positive free cash flow. They rank sixth in market cap, far, far behind Amazon. They're catching up to JD. They appear overvalued according to their price multiples, trading at 30 times earnings, 20 times free cash flow. They generate lots of revenue, 24 billion, more than Mercado Libre, and Mercado Libre has doubled their market cap. If you put $10,000 into this company when they started trading, you'd be in a red the entire time at $4,600 today. At one point, you would have been a little below $2,500, a total loss of 54%. I guess there's only upside from here. I can't imagine it keep going down since they are profitable. Let's go through their first quarter financial slides. This first slide shows their shares outstanding. In the first quarter of 2023, $1.78 billion now it's about 1.8 billion if you round it. So they're adding shares, but not too much. Equity-based awards, that's gone up from 56 million to 66 million. That's the same thing as stock-based compensation. It's a way to subsidize employees with equity. Startup companies use it a lot because startups generally don't have much money. It's a non-cash operating expense, so it brings down your net income, but you add it back on the statement of cash flows. SBC only hits the income statement when it's earned by the employee because sometimes you give an employee options. For instance, every year they get 10,000 shares of the company stock, but they don't receive it until the end of the year. So say I give an employee 50,000 shares over five years. So 10,000 shares will hit the income statement at the end of each year. Revenue is moving in the right direction, 5.8 billion, and it seems to be growing each quarter to 7.1 billion. It looks pretty flat though from Q1 to Q2. And for the trailing 12 months, revenue went from 21.3 billion to 25.7 billion. They just acquired Farfetch. If you exclude that acquisition, it's 25.4 billion. Farfetch is another e-commerce company. They focus on luxury clothing and beauty products. They sell products to boutiques and department stores all over the world. Net income is down. It was 91 million. It's down to 5 million. But the reason it's down is there was a big loss in Farfetch. If you exclude that loss, they would have had a gain of 98 million. And this is just for the quarter. This slide is their annual, a trailing 12 months. And that's up a lot from 200 million to 1.3 billion. 
Their gross profit is up from 1.4 billion to 1.9 billion. Margins are improving 24.5% to 27.1%. Gross profit margin is gross profit over revenue. It's what percent of your revenue you convert to gross profit. Remember, gross profit is on the income statement. It's revenue minus cost of revenue. Adjusted EBITDA is up a little bit, 240 million to 281 million. It would have been 312 million without Farfetch. And margins are down. It was 4.2%, now it's 3.9%. But it would have been better without Farfetch, 4.6%. And this is for the quarter. The next slide will be the trailing 12 months. So gross profit for the trailing 12 months, it grew from 5.1 billion to 6.7 billion. Margins are up from 24% to 26%. EBITDA also improved a lot from 700 million to 1.1 billion. And margins are up also there, 3.4 to 4.3%. Operating cash flow more than double from 1.1 billion to 2.4 billion. Free cash flow more than tripled from 450 million to 1.5 billion. Net revenue improved from 5.7 to 6.5 billion. For the trailing 12 months, 21 billion to 24 billion. Adjusted EBITDA, 300 million to 467 million. And for the trailing 12 months, 900 million to 1.7 billion. A really important metric is active customers, 18.6 million in the first quarter of 2023 to 21.5 million in the first quarter of 2024. They mainly operate in South Korea, so they're never gonna have hundreds of millions of customers unless they expand to other countries. These last three slides were their e-commerce business. Now these next three slides will be developing offerings. Revenue 140 million to 620 million. This includes things like logistics. And trailing 12 months, 590 million to 1.3 billion. EBITDA is getting worse. A loss of 47 million to a loss of 186 million. And adjusted EBITDA for the trailing 12 months is 600 million, a loss of 600 million. Here's their adjusted EBITDA for the last five quarters. It starts with net revenue, 5.8 billion, and it grows each quarter to 7.1 billion. Net income, it went from 90 million to a loss of 24 million. But even though they had a loss, they had positive adjusted EBITDA, positive 281 million. So the adjusted EBITDA is much smoother than net income because it adjusts for those one-off items, namely income tax expense. A big negative in the fourth quarter of 2023. Here's the adjusted EBITDA for the trailing 12 months. That also goes up each quarter to 26 billion, net income of 1.2 billion, and they had the highest adjusted EBITDA, 1.1 billion, for the 12 months ending 331, 2024. A margin of 4.3%, which is pretty consistent with the last few quarters, but much better than last year. It was only 3.4% last year. EBITDA margin is adjusted EBITDA over revenue. It's what percent of your revenue you convert to adjusted EBITDA. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So it takes in net income and adds back those items. It adds back depreciation, interest. It adds back T for taxes. Since they're using adjusted EBITDA, they also adjust for acquisition and restructuring costs, as well as equity-based compensation, which is quite a bit, over $300 million. Operating cash flow, that's how you run a business on cash. That went from 1.1 billion, more than double to 2.4 billion. And the way you calculate free cash flow, you take your operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. Land and buildings, they spent 350 million. Equipment, they spent 550 million. So CapEx spent 900 million. They sold 20 million of CapEx, so that's a cash inflow. So the net CapEx is 881 million. 2.4 billion minus 881 million is 1.5 billion. That's your free cash flow, 1.5 billion. It peaked in the third quarter of 2023 at 1.9 billion. Let's look at a company on Simply Wall Street. It's last price 23, 41 billion market cap, up 2% in the past week, up 41% in the past year. Let's see what they say about the company. Coupang owns and operates retail business through its mobile applications and internet websites, primarily in South Korea. They sell many different products, including home goods, decor, apparel, beauty products, fresh food and groceries, sporting goods, electronics, everyday consumables, travel, restaurant orders, and other delivery services. They offer Rocket Fresh which delivers fresh groceries, Coupang Eats, a restaurant ordering and delivery service, 
Coupon Play, an online streaming service, and they also have advertising products. It operates in the U.S., South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, China, Japan, and India. They were incorporated in 2010. Their headquarters are in Seattle. Here's the stock price since it started trading. It was $50 a share in March 2021, and it fell to below $10 about 14 months later. It's done well since that point. After just a few months, it broke through 20 Then it traded sideways for about a year and a half. It's done well the past couple of months, up about 15-20%. Simply Wall Street's valuation is 35. They say the stock is 35% undervalued. 16 analysts priced this stock at $26. The revenue forecast for 2026 is 40 billion. The free cash flow forecast for 2026 is 2.2 billion. Their revenue has grown a lot since 2018. It was 4 billion, up 50% into 2019 to 6.3 billion. And then it nearly doubled from 2019 to 2020, 12 billion. And it took another three years to double again. It's currently 26 billion. The CEO's salary went from 880,000 to 1.1 million. Total compensation 1.7 million, 10 year CEO, 14 years. In the past year, there's been one insider buy, but lots and lots of sells. Look at SoftBank selling 47 million shares, another 30 million. In the past year, 80 million insider shares have been sold, less than 1 million purchased. 56% of the companies owned by institutions, 20% by VC and private equity firms, 14% by the general public, and 10% by insiders. Masayoshi Sun's SoftBank is the biggest shareholder at 20%, the founder at 10%, the UK firm Bailey Gifford, 9.5%, Green Oaks recently took a position, Bill and Melinda Gates own one half of 1%, and their employee count went from 50,000 to 78,000. And the ticker trades on the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse, and Mexican Bolsa. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or to support the channel, you can go back to my